Hi, this is Rick, Vintage Oddball Cards. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Excited to uh, show you three different items I've never shown before. A big boy card, a very rare card, and a, of course, a photo of the day. We're going to start with the big boy card, and that's the 1913 National Game Joe Jackson in an SGC 9. Uh, many of you know Joe Jackson, just uh, one of the greats of all time, 356 career batting average, five-tool player, played left field for Cleveland and Chicago. But unfortunately for him, he was involved in the 1919 scandal fix of the World Series. Um, it's debatable which... Which was he actually involved in the fix? Because during this World Series, he batted 375, uh, 12 hits, threw a runner out at the plate, no errors in the field. Uh, he wasn't involved in any of the uh, pre meetings uh, of the fix. Uh, so it's kind of debatable uh, if he was actually part of the fix, but he was uh, banned from baseball by Judge Landis. He went on to play. Um, multiple years in semi-pro ball under a different name. Just one of the greats of all time, Shoeless Joe. This particular card is, uh, was, uh, was owned by a, a hobby, hobby icon, Paul Pollard. Uh, this is a part of his collection. He was known for uh, minor league cards. He had the complete set of the T210s. He had the complete set besides the Doyle and the Wagner of the T206 cards. He loved uh, high-end type cards and uh, just really cool to own a card from that used to be owned by a hobby icon, Paul Pollard. And uh, as you, many of you know, Joe Jackson cards are not cheap. You're not going to find anything under $1,000. Uh, he didn't have that many playing day cards. Uh, most of his cards are well over $1,000, uh, so really cool to own a Joe Jackson in an SGC 9. Now, the, uh, the rare card, and this particular card is a Tom Barker card, and it's of uh, Frank Home Run Baker here in an SGC 6. Now, why is this one rare? Well, it's rare because it has... A stamped advertisement here and you don't see too many of these this was like a limited release this Fenway Brewing Company partnered with Tom Barker game to produce um, this 54 card set a limited run the box had a, uh, a Fenway Park advertisement picture on it now Frank Baker was the only card in the 54 card set to have a stamp on it. Now you're going to say, why Frank Baker? He didn't play for, and the National Baseball Card Company is the one that produced the Tom Barker game and also the National game, which is the card I just showed you. That particular game also, they were based in Boston, and uh, the Boston Brewing Company was very short distance from Fenway Park. So why an A's player? Why an athletics player? on the card, why not a Boston player? Well, Boston did not have any uh, Hall of Fame type players on their roster at that time. They did have Rabbit Moranville, but he was very young at the time. So they used the home run king here, Frank Baker, for, that, for the only card in the set to have the advertisement on it. Uh, it's a really rare card, You uh, probably, uh, Graded wise, PSA SGC is under 10 of these have ever been graded, heck, maybe under five. Um, so, really cool to own this one in my collection. Um, now, Frank uh, Home Run Baker, I, I PC him. If you go back about a year ago, you're going to see uh, my cards, Frank Home Run Baker cards. Uh, this particular picture, just I get a kick out of it. He's got the unibrow going there. He almost like, looks like Mr. Bean in the movies, Mr. Bean and the, the hat. Um, looks like he's a, a mugshot there. So uh, Frank Home Run Baker and Tom Barker game. Now, 
the photo of the day kind of relates to Joe Jackson um, and the fact that Judge Landis is in this photo. And this was a rules committee photo of uh, 1926, January of 26. And basically um, you would have here uh, during this rules committee, you would, uh, they would talk about, you know, the different rules that they wanted to change or keep and so forth. And you have in this meeting, some big time people, you got Landis here, you got um, Connie Mack here, you got the tall gentleman here is that's uh, Bill Vex Sr president of the Chicago team. Many of you know, have heard of Bill Veck Jr., who did all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, so that's the dad there, Bill Veck Sr. You got Frank Clark here, a, a Hall of Fame player manager, and you have a couple writers and a couple uh, umpires. So they, in this particular meeting, they changed, uh, which is kind of interesting, they changed the sacrifice fly rule in which a player is credited how or how he was is credited with the sacrifice fly. So in 1908, basically a player was credited with a sack fly if a player tagged up from home and arrived safely, um, tagged up from third and arrived safely at home, the player who batted was uh, was credited with the sacrifice fly. Well, in 1926, that starting of this season, they had kind of liberalized it a little bit. Is they uh, added, you would a player would uh, be credited with a sacrifice fly if a player moved from first to second on a sack fly, or even from second to third. So any base, you're basically a batter is going to be credited with a sacrifice fly. Well, that's this went on until uh, the end of 1930 season, in which they eliminated players being credited for a sack fly because what was happening is the batting averages across the board were at 290. So from 1930, end of the 1930 season to 19, beginning of the 1938 season, the player was not credited for a sacrifice fly. In 1938 season and to this day, a player is, as you know, credited with the sacrifice fly if a player is tags up from third and arrives safely at home. So hopefully I didn't mess that up, but it's so kind of an important meeting, real cool photo. On the back here, you're gonna see the stamping of who was at the meeting, what they discussed, and Underwood and Underwood was the photo agency. So three cool items, especially my Joe Jackson in an SGC9 playing day card. Hey, thanks for watching. This is Rick Vintage Oddball Cards. Bye.